Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, I'm now answering question number eight from the October 2022 International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P1 exam. Here we have a question which is to do with radian measure and some sort of trigonometry and um, circles. And it says, figure two shows the plan view of a design for a pond. The design consists of a sector AOBX. AOBX, which is this sector here, this part of this circle here, all right, of center O joined to a quadrilateral AOBC. Okay, that's a quadrilateral. They've told us BC is eight centimeters. They've told us OA and OB, which are both the radius of the circle, are both three, three meters. So eight meters, sorry. That's three meters. The angle AOB, they've told us, is two over two pi over three radians. So it's given in radian form. And angle BCA is pi over six radians. Calculate first the exact area of the sector AOBX and the exact perimeter of the sector AOBX. So we've got to find the area and the perimeter of the sector. So all the measurements we need are on this diagram. So we've got to first deal with just this sector. We're only dealing with this sector here now. Right? We're not considering the, the quadrilateral, just the sector. We want to find the area and the perimeter of this sector. All right. So what we should know from our understanding of um, radian measure is that the area of a sector is given by a half times r squared times theta, where theta is in radians. When theta is in radians, this is the formula. This is the formula, we should know it. Um, I think this is given in the formula book, if I'm not mistaken. Um, maybe it's not actually. All right, I don't think it is actually. No, it's not. But we should know this formula, okay? Um, the area of a sector of a circle is given by half r squared theta, but the condition is that the angle must be in radians, which it is. Now, we want to find the area of this major sector. So we need to know what the angle subtended or sub that subtends this major sector is. So we need to know what the angle is all the way from there to there. Now, we know the whole, the whole thing is 2 pi, which is 360, 2 pi in radians. And this is 2 pi over 3. So this angle theta, I'm going to say angle theta is equal to 2 pi minus 2 pi over 3. So that's going to be like, um, if you put that over 3, that's 6 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3, that's 4 pi over 3. If I add 4 pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3, I get 6, 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi. So that is the angle theta. So therefore, we can say the area is equal to a half times r squared, r is 3. You can see that r is equal to 3 here, 3 meters. So a half times 3 squared times 4 pi over 3. Okay, so the two cancels with the four giving you two. One of the three cancels from three squared and three gives you three times two, which is six. Six pi meters squared. So there's your answer. The area is six pi meters squared. All right, now they want to give it in exact form, the exact area. So you don't find the decimal value and write it down. You leave it in its exact form. Okay, that's, that's very important for you to understand that. All right. And part two is asking us for the exact perimeter of the sector AOBX. Now, some of you might get confused here by thinking, do we include these dotted lines in the perimeter? Yes, we do when we're considering the perimeter of the sector, because they're only telling us to consider the sector here. If they said find the perimeter of the whole shape, then I wouldn't include these two, these two lines because they're on the inside of the shape and we have to take the length of the outline. Well, the outline of the perimeter include the, the outline of the sector AOBX includes these two lines, if we're just considering the sector. So here we're going to include that as well as the length of this arc going all the way AXB. So we can say the length of the arc is the you know AXB, so the length going from there to there all the way around, plus these two three meters. So you've got the perimeter is equal to the length of the arc plus two times the radius. And we know that the length of the arc the length of the arc is given by the formula r theta. Okay, and when theta is measured in radians, then the length of the arc is r times theta. So in this case, the length of the arc is 3, um, which is the radius times 4 pi over 3. That gives you 4 pi. So we can say the perimeter is going to equal the length of the arc, which is 4 pi, plus 2 times the radius, which is 6. They want the answer in exact form, so there's the answer. You don't round it down to the nearest 3SF or anything like that, you leave it in its exact form. So that is the perimeter 
of this shape here, this sector. Okay, and it's given it in the exact form. So be careful about including, you must include these lines when we're talking about the perimeter of the sector. If it was a, if it was a perimeter of the whole shape, then we would include these two lines because it's inside the whole shape. All right, so that's part A, part one and two done. Now, part B, it says, calculate the exact area of the triangle AOB. Okay, so the, the triangle AOB is basically this, if I join A and B together, it's this triangle here, which is an isosceles triangle. Okay, we know the angle, we know the two sides that make the angle. So we, we know that the area of a triangle is given by the, the formula a half A, B, sine C. So if you know two sides that make the angle, which we do, okay, um, and we know the angle between those two sides, we can find the area using that formula. So the area is equal to a half times 3 times 3, which is 3 squared 9, times the sine of the angle between them, which is 2 pi over 3. Now, we have to. this is where we have to be careful when we're using trig ratios that our um, angles are measured in radians. Okay, that's where we have to be careful that the, the angles are in radians. So we have to um, basically make sure our calculator is in radian measure, all right, when we are dealing with trig, sine, cosine, and tangent, and so on. Okay, so let's now do a half times 3 squared times the sine of 2 pi over 3. We are in radian mode, so that's fine. So 2 times pi over 3. Okay, so that's going to give us our answer, which is 9 root 3 over 4. Again, it says exact area, so that's 9 times root 3 over 4 meters squared. So that's the area of the triangle, AOB. Okay, so there's the answer. So area of triangle AOB is equal to 9 times, a root, th 9 times root 3 over 4 meters squared. All right, so there's part B. Now for part C. It, sh it says show that the length AB is 3 root 3 meters now this is where you have to be really careful right when it says show that all right it says show that and it's giving you um the value that you have to show then your steps have to be very complete yeah as complete as possible all right try to be as complete as possible many students will lose a mark in a question like this because they did not show sufficient steps in this show that question the marks are in the working not in the final answer the final answer is already given so we can find the length a b in lots of different ways probably the easiest way to do is to use a cosine rule because we know two sides and the angle between them so if we use a cosine rule which if you quote it it's a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a you don't have to quote it but you have to show that you're using it properly so what we're trying to find is a b so we can say that a b squared is equal to we have 3 squared plus 3 squared, all right? So, I mean, a lot of people like to do it like this. They like to put the square root sign right from the beginning, which is fine. So, you have 3 squared plus 3 squared minus 2 times 3 times 3, okay, um, times the cosine of the angle 2 pi over 3. Now, what I would suggest you do is you write this, and you write exactly what you get when you put this in your calculator without the screw sign first, um, just to show the steps in a more clear way. So 3 squared plus 3 squared minus 2 times 3 squared, 2 times 3 times 3, times the cosine of 2 pi over 3. And that gives us 27. So you got the square root of 27. So therefore, AB is equal to... Now, we want to write the answer in its simplified third form. So this is like... 27 is like the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Right? The square root of 27, that's 3. And that gives you 3 root 3 as required for us to show. Okay? So showing this this step, I think, is very important here. Um, and it kind of mentioned the mark scheme that they want to see this root 27 part. All right? So that's important for you to know how to deal with. All right? So there's part C of the question. 
Okay, show that. So be careful when you've got show that question. You have to show your steps very clear, clearly and carefully. We could have used the sign rule as well if you wanted to. That would have also worked. We could have worked out one of these angles and used the sign rule. We could have said, um, you know, 3 over sine of this angle equals AB over the sine of that angle. That would have worked as well. All right, that would also work. We could have also uh, drawn a line like this perpendicular line from there to there found out the length of one of these you know from a to the midpoint here okay by using um, this would be pi over 3 and that's pi over 3 we could have used uh, trigonometry of Sokatoa found the length of this using uh, opposite over hypotenuse sine sine of this angle pi over 3 equals x over 3 and then doubling the answer all of those would have worked okay but it looks like it's set up just nicely for the cosine rule here so that's probably the easiest way to deal with it just using whatever's given here without having to calculate anything really else. All right, that's part C. So again, you must be careful with these show that questions that you show your steps carefully. So I've shown, you know, how I use the cosine rule, and I've shown that we get root 27 and shown how that simplifies to 3 root 3 in its exact form. Okay, now for part D, we're told to find the total surface area of the pond giving the answer in meters squared to correct to two significant figures. Okay, we'll keep that in mind, two significant figures in the end, we have to write the answer. All right, so now, uh, we're gonna find the total surf surface area of the whole shape here, the whole pond. Now, we already found the area of this section over there. What happened there, I don't know. We already found the area of this section over here, which we called area one. Um, that area was six pi meters squared. And area two, was the area of the triangle which we found in the last part of the question, which was nine pi nine root three over four meters squared. So that's nine times root three over four meters squared. What we're left now is to find the area of this um, triangle here. Okay, now so we've got to find the area of this triangle in this section. Now to find the area of the triangle when, when it's not a right angle triangle, we know the formula that we can use as a half a b sine c where we need to know an angle and the two sides which produce the angle which make the angle or which uh, the the angle is the included angle of those two sides so it's the angle between those two sides now here we have these two sides we know them already eight eight meters and three three root three meters so if we were to find this angle over here which i'm going to call x if i'm able to find the angle x then I can say that the area is going to be a half times 8 times 3 root 3 times the sine of angle x. <clears throat> now, to find angle x, um, I mean, if I was, for example, going to use the, um, the cosine rule, I'd have to know what this side is. If I was going to use the sine rule, I'll also have to know what this side is, because I need to have a pair of opposites. One of them is known, um, and the other one is unknown. So I'd need to know what this length is to find the angle x using the sine rule directly. So I can't use the sine rule directly to find x. However, I can find this angle over here, which I'm going to call y, um, using the sine rule. Because this is a pair of opposites, y and 8. One of them is known, and the other one is unknown. And here we have a pair of known opposites. So I can use the sine rule to find what y is. So I can say that we need angle x, which is equal to, now the angles in the triangle, they add up to 180 degrees. So this is going to be 180, but in degrees, when dealing with radians, it's going to be pi minus the sum of these two angles, um, which is um, y plus pi over 6. Okay, that will give us the angle x. So once I've found that, I can then use the formula. All right. So this a, b, and this c here doesn't re refer to these sides at all. It refers to the concept of two sides and the angle between them. All right, so now, so let's find angle y. So we've got to find angle y. That's our first objective then. Now, I know that the sine of y divided by the length opposite that side, which is 8, will give me the same ratio as the sine of pi over 6 divided by the length opposite that, which is 3 root 3. So therefore, I can say that, uh, you know, y will end up being inverse sine of 8 times the sine of pi over 6 over 3 root 3. If I calculate that, that will give me the answer that I'm looking for. 
So again, I have to make sure that we are in radian mode, which we are, because we have to tell the, uh, the calculator that we're putting in radians and we want to take out radians as well. So inverse sine of, and I've got um, eight times the sine of pi over six. Whoops, pi over six. Okay, divided by three root three. Three root three. Let's just close that big um, bracket there. And that gives us our angle in radians y, which is 0 0.87852. So we can say y is equal to 0 0.87852. That's not our final answer, so I'm not going to round that to anything. So I'm going to find our x's. Angle x is equal to pi minus y, which is 0 0.87852 plus pi over 6. So that's going to give me the angle x, which we're going to use then to find the area. So I'm going to have, I'll keep this in my calculator. I'll do pi minus um, the answer, which I just got now, plus pi over 6, in brackets, plus pi over 6. Whoops. Okay, so that is the last answer, which was in our calculator, this, plus pi over 6, take it away from pi, to give us x, which is 1.7394. 1.7394 goes on. All right, that's the angle in radians. Okay, that's the angle x in radians. So therefore, the uh, the area of the triangle or the the, part of the section through which is a triangle is going to be given by a half a b sine c. So it's a half times the two sides, which are eight times three root three times three root three times the sine of the angle x, which is 1.7394. So we can say, therefore, the area of the third part of our shape is going to be given by, if I just leave this in my calculator again, so it's an exact form, so I have a half, 1 over 2, times 8, times 3 root 3, times the sine of the last answer, Okay, which was this there. All right, and that gives us the area of 3, which is 20.4896, 20.4896, okay, meters squared. Therefore, we can say the total area of the whole shape is equal to area 1, which was 6 pi. So you have 6 pi plus 9 root 3 over 4, yeah, plus... 20.4896 so we take all these values so I'll take this value I'll add to it um, 9 times root 3 over 4 and I'll also add to this 6 pi and the answer comes out as 43.236 43.236 meters squared however they want us to give the answer to two significant figures so that's going to be 43. So the area, the total area is going to be 43 meters squared to 2SF as they want us to give the answer. So there's the answer for this question part D of question 8, which concludes the whole of the question number 8 from this P1 October 2022 exam. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from um, P1 uh, radian measure and trigonometry can be found in the playlist over here and over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link um, the card that showed up from the beginning of the uh, video at the top here will tell you how if you click on that it will take you to a video which shows you how to use my channel to help you find things that you need and help you to revise them more efficiently um, thank you for watching see you soon